said that Jesus Christ has risen And He is the open door Well, how you doing, everyone? Welcome to this episode of the Cajun Conservative Show, where I talk about life, I talk about liberty, I talk about the pursuit of happiness, and I show the world that us Cajuns do have intelligence. Hope you're having a good day, good week, wherever you're located, because remember, this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hope you're having a good week, ladies and gentlemen. I know I'm having, uh, at the at the beginning of this episode, well, coming into the studio tonight, I had some ball shrimp. Oh, it was good. As we say in Cajun country, sa c'est bon. That's how we say that is good in Cajun country. Sa c'est bon. Uh, just, uh, I, my, my belly is full, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, I, I did something, you know, uh, I haven't done in a while. I, normally, my day is hectic. I am running all over the place. And I am, uh, I'm just, I, I'm, I got this going on, that going on. And when you, when you help... Uh, with your family business, you have podcasts, and then you have ministry. You're pulled a lot of directions. But today was one of the first days I just sat home, hang out with the wife, hang out with the kids, watch some television, uh, went eat like I said some ball shrimp. I was it was a good day. It was just it was a restful day. And you might be asking, well, why did you go to the studio? Well, we had something lined up for tonight, which I'm eager to announce to you in a little bit. But uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was just a day to relax and enjoy the family and enjoy my house. I haven't <laughs> haven't chilled like that in my house in a long time, so I, that that was good. I just had a a, a day of rest, a day of rest, and, and I, I was excited. Uh, with that being said, like I said, the we we came into the studio today and to record the show is because we're gonna have a very special guest. We're gonna have Mr. Steve Laffey. He is a 2024 Republican candidate for the president of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, this is one of the fastest growing conservative podcasts in America. I believe that now. Why do I say that? Because we're getting national. We have a, we having a presidential candidate. Come on, Mr. Steve Laffey is going to go ahead and give his thoughts and opinions on the race, what he's, uh, why he's running for the president of the United States and his goals. If he gets elected as the president of the United States. So I'm excited with that. Mr. Steve Laffey, he's going to be with us on the third segment. So please stay around and listen for that. Uh, also the interview will be on YouTube and on rumble after the podcast is released. Uh, go ahead and check that out. And, uh, great interview guys. We're going to have fun with Mr. Steve Laffey, 2024 presidential candidate. Uh, here in the United States of America. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking, ladies and gentlemen. We um, and this this story has been flying by, and I I, I look at it and I, I I start I start to think about let's do it, but then I want to get all all my T's crossed and my eyes dotted, and it, it this came to a boom. What am I talking about? It is well, it's the Pentagon leak that has happened oh, over two weeks now. Give you a little bit of background. About two weeks ago, a week, two weeks ago, um, on uh, Discord. Now, if you don't know what Discord is, it is a gaming app. Uh, I when I appeared on um, the podcast, uh, dude, the dude. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of their name right now. The name uh, where I talk. I, we uh, the subject was abortion. Uh, uh, dude, connect. I think it was called. It was, some, it was a podcast like that. They use Discord. And I had to download this card and I have used it on a number of occasions, but this card is basically for gamers. You, you go in there and you talk about the games that you're playing, or if you're playing a game, you can chat and all this stuff. Well, on this card, they had a, a person start dropping classified documents from our Pentagon. And these, these documents, what were in these documents were very significant to China relationships, to the Ukrainian war and things that are happening in these countries that involve America. Now the Pentagon is our, is our, is our defense. Basically, this is where all our top generals go. This is where our military strategize about things that are happening on in the world. Uh, if you remember, um, uh, Larry, the cable guy, 
had a television show where he went into the Pentagon. They let him into a certain area and something happened and they rushed him out of there because the Pentagon, a, a lot of top secret stuff happened in the pen happens in the Pentagon. This is our, this is, this is the core of our defense. Basically, this is the greatest minds, <clears throat> excuse me, in our country that are strategizing of what America should do next. And they should advise the president of the United States. But classified documents started leaking out. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, look, uh, there, was, there was a lot of things we learned about these documents. But was this smart? Was this smart that somebody in the Pentagon decided, hey, I'm going to go ahead and take top secret documents and letters from politicians or whatever and put them on discard? No, that is, that is not a smart move. First off, this puts up probably a lot of troops in danger because, like I said, this is the top military facility in our country, the Pentagon. Now, it came about er earlier this week that there was an arrest of a 21-year-old Air National Guardsman in connection to the classified documents that have been leaked online in recent months has been met with outrageous uh, with outrage as critic, uh, critics wonder how a young man could have such a high level access to national information, national security information. Now, this comes from Fox News. Um, the person that was arrest, arrested, was, his name was Jack Douglas Taxicar. I believe I, uh, if I said his name wrong, I apologize. He was arrested on Thursdays after U.S. intelligence documents that had critical information about the war in Ukraine and China relationships were posted on the chat app Discord. So, ladies and gentlemen, we had a 21-year-old National Guardsman, Air National Guardsman, had high enough clearance to go and, and go into the Pentagon and take these documents and put it on Discord. Um, the reason there is criticism, there, there's a twofold of why there's criticism with this, but the and the first one is how can a 21 year old boy? And look, I'm, look, I'm sorry, I am 30. I know this man is nine years younger than me, but I ju I just wonder how can a person that is 21 years old have so much of a high security clearance? And, and he and he had the ability to take this to his gaming site, this gaming uh, app, and upload them. What's going on at the Pentagon? Ain't they? What are they doing? How did this boy? How did this man get out of here? I'm not gonna call him a boy because he's 21 years old. I, this this man, this young man, that really don't know anything of life. Do this now. I know young people. I, I'm a youth pastor. I've been 21. I, I know that that the, the 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 comprehension of making good decisions is slim to none. But this young man was sitting. I don't know if he he worked in the Pentagon. I I, I don't know. But went ahead and pulled classified documents and put it on a gaming app that is disturbing especially for the military when you're supposed to have discipline and you're supposed to know hey i ain't i'm not supposed to do this now we don't know the reason why he did it we know he went into trial and they, they talked about it and all this stuff but walking out the 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 top the the the, the most secure place i guess besides the white house and just walked out with these documents Ladies and gentlemen, this is disturbing. If this, think about this. If this young man at 21 could pull the documents out from the Pentagon, how easy for it is, how easy it is for our enemies to get information from the Pentagon? A lot of people don't want to hear about that, but it just, that raises the question. If this young man at 21 years old, an American citizen and in our military could go ahead and get that information. How easy is it for somebody that, that does not have the best intention of this country to go in there and take away? Now, this is this ha, this was a problem for the Biden administration, but it wasn't too big of a problem because the Biden administration hardly didn't talk about it. I, I think this is egg on their face because the president of the United States at this time, I don't know if he's back now, but he was in Ireland this week.
and saying how he's back in his home country and he loves his home country and he, he wants to go ahead and help his home country stop the battles that are going on. Go, go ahead and, and, and care about the world, but don't care about America. That That's... I, I'm going to leave it at that. But the Biden administration, this is egg on their face. Because, like I said, look, we're already discussing about potential things happening. Look, remember weather balloon? It's been proven that Intel got sent back to China. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the pre, this is happening on President Biden. Watch. Was it President Biden's fault? No. I don't think he knows what's going on in the Pentagon, but come on. Ladies and gentlemen, we have top secret information leaving the Pentagon by a 21-year-old man that's putting it on dash ca uh, this card, and then they're reposting it on Twitter where the whole world could go ahead and see. Now, I think according to the Daily Wire, it was over 100 classified documents, and 40 have been confirmed by the... Um, by the Pentagon. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is this is disturbing. Where we have top secret documents leaving the Pentagon. Now, with that being said, there is some concerns that as to what was in the documents. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we like I said, I don't know why the the reason this per this man put this information out there. But, uh, you know, before I do that, I want to go ahead and address the issue. Uh, let me go ahead and pull that argue, uh, that that um, that article up because this is from the Daily Wire. Uh, and look, while this was going on and in between, journalists and news anchors were putting it on their sites. Hey, th 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 there's the leaks. There's things that are happening. This is what's going on. And the Daily Wire was one of them. But the White House tells journalists they have no business reporting on leak intel. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. The White House is telling the news media, and that I'm included in that, that we should not report on the things that were re that, that is in the leak intel. I understand certain doc. I understand certain things. Okay, we should not, um, the news media should not report things like where the troops are located or things that, 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 that will hurt our freedoms and our nation. But ladies and gentlemen, if there's things in there that the president has told us that was not happening, that is happening, which I'm going to prove in a little while, I think the media should report on that, you think? But the Biden administration does this good, ladies and gentlemen. They tell the, the news media not to express your First Amendment right. If you look at the First Amendment, why did the First Amendment have the freedom of religion in there? It was because it would allow people like me and Rush Limbaugh, who, who sadly passed away, but Mark Levin, Matt Walsh, Michael Knowles, Ben Shapiro, uh, all these all these people of Fox News, CNN, I'm even going to throw liberals in there, CNN, MSNBC, that we have the right to report on certain stories that we would hold the government uh, responsible you know, if the government would go ahead and say, no, you cannot report this, this, and this, we would have to have a propaganda network. We, we, the government would do whatever they want and just tell the media what to say. But our founding fathers had, were smart enough to say, no, we are going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and give the, the, the press the right to write about the government to hold them accountable. So when the White House tells journalists they have no business reporting on leak intel, that is a red flag. The Biden administration has already attacked our right to religion, our right to freedom as people of the nation. Now they're going ahead and tell the journalists do not report on the intel. And what I'm about to tell you, this came from Fox News, Sean Hannity and Tucker Carlson. But ladies and gentlemen, for, for the media, for the for the. For, for John Kirby, who is the coordinator of strat, uh, strategized communications at the National Security Council, goes ahead and tells the press at the White House meeting on Monday, do not, you, you should not talk about things that are in this report. I understand classified stuff like that can hurt our nation, but if there's something in there that we should know about, 
that is exposing lies. Yes, us in the media should do this. But when the, but now when John Kirby said this and I got this article, which was on April 10th of 2023, I thought to myself, no, there's something up. And this is what happened. Well, according to Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity, two, two of the prime time people in Fox News, there are some things in this, these leaks that needs to be discussed. So what, what we're going to do is because I, I really want to spend some time on this because this is a whole topic in itself. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And we'll be back in a few moments to discuss what was in the in these documents, and and we're gonna the the the, the problem that the administration the Biden administration don't want you to know. We'll be right back in a few moments. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. How you doing, everyone? Isaac here. I'm the Cajun Conservative, and I want to thank Brother Lanny Hayes from Hayes' Dump Truck Service for their generous support of the Cajun Conservative and Brothers Just Searching. Hayes' Dump Truck Service serves the Lafayette and surrounding areas. If you have any job that you need done, like cleanup or hauling material to your job site or your home, we haul limestone, we haul sand, we haul topsoil, any type of material you need. If you're in the Lafayette and surrounding areas, please call Brother Lanny Hayes at 337-852-8043. Remember, Hayes is Dump Truck Service, where Jesus is Lord of the company. Cleansed and made us whole, not one hub, not one soul. All right, everybody, welcome back to the second segment of the Cajun Conservative Show. Just a reminder, we have 2024 presidential candidate Steve Laffey. He's going to be on the third segment. Please stay tuned for that. Uh, I, I believe you're going to enjoy that interview, and we're going to hear what Mr. Steve has to say about our nation and its, its current crisis that is going on. Please stay tuned for that. You're going to enjoy it, I promise you. Uh, let's go continue on to what we were saying uh, in the first segment. Remember, we talked about this leak. The Pentagon allowed a 21-year old man that was arrested this week um to to you know that that allow him to go in and out of the pentagon and to keep posting on a gaming site a gaming chat site uh uh uh, dash card this card um then we then we talk about how the media is well the, the the white house press secretary well not press secretary correction john kirby uh someone as part of the biden administration tell the media hey do not report on what's in 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 this these documents because of threat to national security i understand the part of national security i i think the media should make you know look there is some people out there that have platforms like yours truly that rant and raid about everything without closely monitoring it monitoring it or saying what is happening uh, or they say something's happening and it's it is false okay i understand there is some there is some conspiracy theorists out there there is but ladies and gentlemen when you have a 21 year old boy going in and out and they're releasing stuff i understand the national security implications of it but there is some stuff that should be addressed that was brought out in this stuff one being the war in ukraine ladies and gentlemen look we have spent billions upon billions of dollars in ukraine i saw a news article the other day where uh, Zelensky said i need 14 billion dollars more ladies and gentlemen 14 billion dollars more and we're not directly involved in this conflict as we thought but ladies and gentlemen you according to these documents these these documents that were leased leak ukraine is struggling this came from slides that were released onto discord by this 21 year old air national guardsman where that the ukraine that the ukraine war it, 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 the, the the Ukrainians are in trouble. That's why Zelensky's acting for fourteen billion because it, it, he, they're they're only they're, the only reason they're they're even in this war is because of the backs of the American people. And look, I'm not hearing of other nations send money to Ukraine like the United States is sending it. Come on, when a nation is trying to fight a war and they're asking another nation to fund them, that is scary. 
The list, look, and look, don't get me wrong. I, I, to me personally, it's been a year since this war has started. And I believe Zelensky should go ahead and start trying to make peace talks with Russia. And I understand, look, I understand why Biden wants the Ukrainians to win this war. Look, if you look at right and wrong, the Ukrainians are the the people that are in the right. They're fi- they are fighting for democracy. They are fighting to hold their sovereignty. I understand that. But ladies and gentlemen, the reason that the Biden administration wants the Ukrainians to win is because they have pushed for over a year that Ukraine is the right people. And I understand that that is right. But if the if Ukraine falls, it would make the Biden administration look bad. And that's why the Biden administration, through every loophole they can ha- ha- do, they go ahead and give money to Ukraine. But we and we've been told for the last year and something that Ukraine is winning this war and Ukraine is is fighting for their sovereignty and they're 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 doing that they're, they're, they're beating Russia. But come to find out, Russia is taking back some parts of Ukraine. You don't hear that on MSNBC, CBS. You don't hear that 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 happening on mainstream media. Why? Because they're trying to. They're trying to protect Biden. They're trying to make Biden look good. Now, this comes from Tucker Carlson, where he made he made mention how. Um, uh, let me try to find it and make sure that uh, I believe it's like four Ukraines, Ukrainian soldiers to one Russian soldier that is being lost right now. Ladies, and th- these are in this document. See, that's why John Kirby don't want you to see what's going on in these documents or do not report on what's going on in these documents right here that's why john kirby is telling the white hey don't report on the intel that is in this stuff because ladies and gentlemen the the biden administration and the mainstream media is lying about ukraine and look if you notice you're not hearing it no more you're not hearing not even on fox news and news i remember newsmax had a had a reporter out there in ukraine but you're not hearing it hardly no more in mainstream media. Why? Because this war has gotten to a point to where if we let it cool down a little bit, and if Ukraine does lose the war, well, it ain't gonna. Biden will look bad because we're only gonna report on it one night that Ukraine has fallen, and Biden was for this, and Biden was for that, and then they're gonna shut it down. Because remember, I talked about it the other day. They don't want the mainstream media does not want anything that makes Biden looks bad. They don't want to report on it. But this is what's happening in these docs. They, they're these the the the, the, the uh, some of this stuff, and they also talk about China and other things. But ladies and gentlemen, just focusing on Ukraine, it's not all peaches and oranges in Ukraine. Ukraine is really suffering. And, and ladies and gentlemen, this this right here is is a problem for the Biden administration. This is egg on their faces because this leak showed that the, the Biden administration is investing in in, a, in, a, in in something that is doomed to fail. And I, I did uh, hear this. Um, I believe it was Dan Bagino uh, for a brief second, and he made this point: Are we investing in something that we know is going to doom to fail? And and if it is, we we have to restructure ourselves as America and say, what were we gonna do? And, and it's basically like this, okay? Me investing in something that is that I know, that it, okay, I'm, I'm, man, I'm trying to I'm trying to picture something where I could, you know, it, it's me investing in a company that I know is failing and is doomed to fail, but I'm still gonna put money in just to prolong it from failing. That's why I said at the beginning, Zelensky should go ahead and start peace talks and try to save a little bit of the country. Will he do that? No, because Biden is his, it, it, Biden is paying the, it's front the bill. We are paying for Ukraine's war. I hate to tell anybody that believes differently, but we are. Also, what was revealed in these leaked documents is that we have special um, special forces, special force soldiers in Ukraine. Now, if you remember, and I, I don't have the audio or the video, 
But I remember Biden clearly saying that we're not going to send American soldiers to Ukraine. That was a promise he made the American people. But these documents show that we have special forces in Ukraine. Tucker Carlson even said, and this is a quote from his show, American soldiers are fighting Russian soldiers. So, it, so, di- so this is not a regional conflict in uh, Eastern Europe. This is a hot war between the two primary nuclear superpowers on Earth. Ladies and gentlemen, the Biden administration, and look, it has, it, it, uh, war has not been declared. We have not declared war on Russia. We have not declared, this has not gone through Congress, but we have military personnel in Ukraine. This was released in these documents. And ladies and gentlemen, they lied to us. They're lying to us about how good the war is in Ukraine. And they, they lied to us by saying we're not going to send American soldiers. Now, some people have argued, well, that is, the, that is in the embassy. That is in this. But these documents are showing that there's some American soldiers in Ukraine fighting Russian soldiers. Oh, Isaac, what, you don't want America to intervene? We intervene $14 billion or whatever the account is. Oh, I don't know how much money we spent in Ukraine already. But if we have soldiers in there, that means we are directly in this fight with them. Now, now I can understand that the president didn't say we're, we're not going to. The president never said, hey, we're not sending soldiers. In there. You couldn't hold that on. But the president went behind a microphone and looked into a camera and said, we are not sending soldiers to Ukraine and we have soldiers in Ukraine that is helping Ukrainian soldiers to me that is a lie the Biden administration lied there's no way two ways about it and and, and ladies and gentlemen this this right here furates me (coughs) excuse me throat's getting kind of dry right there but the the, 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 the the soldiers, we send soldiers to Ukraine. Now, we know that this is a second habit for the Biden administration because the Biden administration lies all the time. But ladies and gentlemen, this right here is why John Kirby said, hey, media, don't talk about what's in the documents. Because ladies and gentlemen, just to, and look, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and read it. I was not planning on bringing this out, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about something else that was in the documents. Now, this is from the Daily Caller. The Daily Caller put, puts out, uh, put out a good article saying leaked docs, NATO ally Hungary called Biden administration a, uh, a top three adversaries. Hungary, uh, hung, Hungary, a member of NATO ally alongside the United States, has identified the Biden administration as one of his top three adversaries, according to the leaked Pentagon documents obtained by the Daily Caller. During a February 2022 political strategy session, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Obin identified the United States as one of the top three adversaries of his Friends Party, according to the intelligence from the U.S. ambassador in B- uh, Budapest and a CI reference in the documents as NATO's allies, Hungary and the United States are legally ab- ab- uh, obligated to defend each other from foreign aggression. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> there's one of our allies that is just saying, hey, the prime minister is saying, look, the, America, the American president or the Americans are one of our top three a- adversaries. Ladies and gentlemen, that that's dangerous. This is in the documents. It's sad that a country looks at us as an adversary instead of our, our, one of our own NATO allies. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why John Cor- Kirby didn't want this stuff out there. This is why John Kirby don't want podcasts like me and other people to report on this. Because ladies and gentlemen, this makes the Biden administration look bad. And ladies and gentlemen, if you if you look at it like this, okay, in my final thoughts of the intel, like I said, I don't I don't think it was right that this person went on Discord and brought this out. I don't think it was right. This this, this really did put our this showed the lack of intel, uh, intelligence and the lack of security at our top buildings. Um, for one, 
But if you look at the, look at the stuff that we can report about, it, it shows that Biden lied and that Biden is not really the lover of all the other countries. Ladies and gentlemen, and look, look, let's go like this. Why, why was it so quick to arrest this person as well? Look, he should have been arrested. He did break laws. But ladies and gentlemen, we still don't know things about January 6th. We don't know any, we, we, we barely know anything about Jeffrey Epstein. We don't, we don't, there's a lot of things that we don't know about that the Biden administration and the FBI and them like, eh, no, we're not going to go ahead and say that. Or no, you know, we're not going to look at it. But something like this, this person that, that I don't possibly maybe had more documents told the truth of what he saw. Yes, he did leak it. And that was wrong. But gave great insight of what was by doing. And he was exposed as a liar. Went to jail in a week. They found that they found out who he was in a week. Think about this. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, look, the, and the Biden administration don't want this told. They don't, everything I just told you, they don't want told in the national media. Why? Because it makes Biden look weak. And I, I, I addressed this on, uh, uh, I addressed this on a podcast. I made a TikTok video about this. The reason that America looks weak is because our president looks weak. And ladies and gentlemen, it is, it is sad that we have gotten to this point. Where we have a 21 year old bringing, it's apparently going in and out of the Pentagon with top secret documents. And the response of the, the, the Biden administration, they don't report on it because the things that, that, that are in it makes Biden looks bad and it puts AIDS on his face. And ladies and gentlemen, this is why, this is why our nation is failing. Because we have a president that does not know what to do. And we're starting to see the results of it. And it is sad. It is very sad. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and take a break. On the other side of the break, we're going to have Mr. Steve Laffey, uh, the 2024 presidential candidate running in the Republican Party. Stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll be right back after this short break. Cheers and good on you, boys and girls. My name is Scott Ford, and I have a show on Rumble. It's the Scott Ford Show, all one word. The Scott Ford Show, all one word, and it's on Rumble. I'd be very happy if you went ahead and subscribed, like Isaac. I'm a true American-loving patriot. Thank you, Isaac. God bless. Enjoy your life. You're my peace of mind. When this old world seems to get me down. All right, everybody, welcome back to the third and final segment of the Cajun Conservative Show today. And I'm having I have the honor and the privilege of interviewing 2024 presidential candidate for the Republican Party, Mr. Steve Laffey. Mr. Steve, welcome to the Cajun Conservative Show. How you doing, sir? It's great to be on with you. The uh the C Cajun conservative, I, I told you a little bit about my time down in, in Louisiana back in the in the 80s. And of course, I was there in the 90s when I, when I was uh, involved at Morgan Keegan. So great to be on with you and the, and the, the great Cajun conservatives. I love it. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you did tell me this before we get into any politics. And I tell everybody this when they're on this show. If you eat our Cajun cookie, you gain weight. You said when you came down here, you gained a lot of weight or a little bit, a little bit of weight at least. I gained 10 pounds in the 10 weeks of 1985. It's the only time I've ever weighed more than 172 pounds, which is what I weigh today. But I weighed about 180 something when I left. And I'm like, I, EJ Uso took me to every restaurant, every place. His wife, I called mama. I worked for EJ Uso, who's the LSU business school is now named after. And, uh, and, I, and I called the mama and we'd go to the house and he'd say, he'd call me at seven o'clock to come over for breakfast. Then there was lunch and the whole thing never stopped. And I, I staggered out of the place happy as could be. Hey, hey if you want to, are you always hearing people about wanting to lose weight? If you want to gain weight, just move down to South Louisiana. You're pretty good. I love it. So Mr. Steve, you're running for president, uh, and for the Republican party. Well, the nomination right now we have, we're about to get into 
the uh, the primary season, which is a uh, is a big time for us here at the Cajun Conservative Show to uh, look at politics and how our nation was formed to have this democratic process of elections. Uh, first of all, before we get into questions, why are you running for president of the United States of America? I'm running for president of the United States of America because our country and my party refuses to directly confront our problems. And if you go to stevelaffey.com, not only do I have the solutions that people don't want to talk about, I am uniquely qualified to fix them. I am a financial expert. We have a financial crisis. I'm the Harvard Bus I'm a poor kid from Cranston, Harvard Business School graduate, financial expert, taught the top finance course at the University of Rhode Island, helped run a financial firm in the deep south called Morgan Keegan, the largest firm in the south that did this. And I in my hometown of Cranston, Rhode Island, 83,000 people, it went bankrupt basically. I came home, became the mayor, and engineered the, the, the greatest financial turnaround and the quickest one ever seen in American history from a city that had the lowest bond rating in America, 37 days from missing payroll to investment grade, solid city. So I'm a movie maker, a filmmaker, an author, but I'm a financial expert, and I know how to put the right people in the right place at the right time to fix this financial mess that's been caused by both parties the last 20 years. Yeah, it's not it's not a left or a right issue. It, it's just a big government spending problem. It is a moral issue that we have destroyed the future for our children. I'll give you an example. 80% of Americans think that their, their children, and I have six of them, I have the most of anybody in the race, they think that their children will not have a better future than them. That has never happened in this country at 80 percent, and it certainly never happened with unemployment at three and a half percent. We've got to change that because we I'm 61. We have taken too much from our children. That's why we have to fix Social Security so the kids get something. We've got to fix the Federal Reserve and stop this inflation because it's destroying the ability of young people to buy a home. We've got to fix the things that are going wrong financially with our spending. And we've got to get a new tax code. We cannot do the 87,000 IRS agents who are going to just go after people. We need Herman Cain's 999 plan. I'm bringing it back. We need a simple tax that people know what it is, that everybody pays something. It's slightly progressive. And we collect a lot more money because we spread it out among more people. That's what we need. That's what I want to do. So, so on, with that note, you you mentioned you're you have most kids in the race, and you are a Republican, and I'm a Republican. I don't try to identify as a Republican. I try to say I say more. I'm a conservative. Okay. Uh, the the reason being is, and I I thought about going no party because of the things that the Republican Party has done, and I'm I'm involved with a few of the the Republican packs here, a few Republicans that I, I deal with on a regular basis I talk to. So I've decided to stay in it right now. But yes, well, we have two parties. I've been a Republican since I've been 18. Um, I am a populist conservative. I want to tell you what exactly what that means. I'm a populist in that I believe that the elite people who run the Federal Reserve, let's say the 17 people who decide on your money and your inflation, but really represent only rich people, I believe I can get 17 people I went to high school with to go to the Federal Reserve and we can make inflation zero. It's not that hard. They did it on purpose. I believe if I was president, I can get regular folks to help our government, the elite people who have gotten rich off this, this inflation, off this spending. This is what has to stop. But I'm conservative. I'm pro-life. I'm pro-guns. I'm pro, you know, I am conservative and I am I'm pro you know, but I'm really about spending. Like if you had to ask me one issue, I balance every budget that I've ever come in contact with at, in the private sector, in the public sector. I've had success in both. That's what makes me different. The other people running, God bless them. They're doing the best they can. They're either associated with running up major deficits, supported people who run major deficits. I don't. I'm only into run surpluses. Like, like, that's what I do. And that's what I know how to do. If you went to stevelaffey.com and went to my movie, you would see me take $500 billion to a $1 trillion out of the budget in eight minutes. That's what I do. And that's what this country needs. We can't have the same old conversation. I'll give you an example. God bless Mike Pence. Nice Christian man. 
He's on TV a couple of weeks ago. I watched him. They said, what about Social Security? And he says, well, first, we have to make sure people know there's a problem. Well, let me tell you something. Everybody knows there's a problem with a $61 trillion deficit. Everybody who's 40, who makes $100,000 or $60,000 busting their butt, and they go visit a financial advisor, and that if they're making 100, they know $12,000 leaving. It's going to the federal government, and they know they're never getting it. In fact, the financial advisor says, Joni or Steve or whatever it might be, you're not going to get it. Let's not plan for it. How can that be okay? Everybody I've met making my movie Fixing America knew there was a, f a problem with, with Social Security. We can't have people continue to say that we have to let people know there's a problem. Or, or in the case of President Trump and the governor, good governor of Florida, we're not going to touch it. I know it's a third rail issue, but if you want the dollar to survive, we got to start solving large problems one at a time, not a half hour news cycle where every topic changes every day. We've got to get someone who can focus in on a big problem, then a focus on another problem and keep fixing them so our children get more. We've taken too much from them. And especially the Biden administration who have, and I, I did this, I have the numbers where just, and it, it has gone up since I've done the numbers, but in two years have raised our debt to close to $5 trillion. They have, inflation has gone through the roof. We have the, pres uh, the president of the United States making a false claim where he says the inflation was there before he got in there when it was only sitting, I think at 1.4 now it's sitting at 6.1 and that is past the peak of 9.1. So we, we do have, and look, I, I, I say like this, uh, Mr. Steve, that we're in a recession. I don't care what the Biden administration says. You look at the numbers, you look at the, uh, the economy, we're in a recession and it don't look like it's getting any better. We are in a recession and we are now in a financial crisis. The failure of, say, SVB Bank several weeks ago was just the canary in the coal mine. And I don't say this to scare people. I just say this because I'm a financial expert. And the other people have said why this has happened. Maybe it was a woke bank or whatever. The, whatever. No. The mismatching of assets and liabilities in both duration and time is what causes financial crises. That's what's happening at our banks. In fact, we actually, listen, in 2008, so everybody know what happened when Obama came in, right? And President Bush was leaving. The crisis was happening. They passed these laws so there wouldn't be any more financial crises. Everybody remember this, right? Right? The Federal Reserve kept rates at zero. And guess what they did? Everybody listened to the show who kept maybe, I don't know, they saved money like they're supposed to. They got 50 grand at different banks. They were making like three grand a year. And for that person, that was a lot. That went to zero for 12 years. They took a trillion dollars out of middle class people right out of their pockets from their savings accounts. Everybody was like, I'm getting zero. What did the people do who are getting zero? They either had to find a way to buy stocks. They took on more risk or they didn't, or they didn't do anything and they got nothing. Where'd that money go? Went to rich people. That's where it went, just so people know what happened. And what do they do for people? What does the federal government do for people when they do these things? They say things like, oh, you know what? We'll give everybody $250,000 of FDIC insurance per account, not $125,000. Well, I'll tell you right now where you live. or where I don't know exactly where you live, but I was on Pleasant Hill Road in Nesbitt, Mississippi, when they told us that. And I was driving west. And I'm looking at each side of these homes. And I'm thinking I grew up next to a gas station. And I'm thinking I could drive to the west coast and drive into the ocean and not on a road like this and not see one person who had $125,000 in a bank. And that was so. So what they do to, to say we're going to help you is not helpful. What they do, the elites, to take away is take away your money. And with inflation, what do they do? You're making sixty grand. You're making one hundred and fifty grand, depending on where you are. You think you're doing okay, depending on your age. And what happened to you? You got a four thousand dollar extra bill in energy cost alone per year. Now, if you're making a million, you're like, huh, whatever. I bought some silver. I got this. I'm okay. You're making sixty five grand. You're not taking a vacation with your kids. You're not sending the kid to college. That's what four grand means. And guess what? When inflation finally comes down, they don't send the money back, do they? Does the Federal Reserve send the money back? No, they sent you a check for 1400 and took out 10000 And that's what they do to people after they overspend. They all do it, and I've got to stop it. And I'm the only person, I think, who actually knows this stuff.
Like, this is what I do. So you, I'm stevelaffey.com. When you go there, you will see complete solutions to these problems, ones that we could do that would solve this mess so that we don't have to talk about this anymore. We can then create jobs, right? Investment in our country, like stopping what's happening with China. I'm the only candidate who said publicly since 2005, when I ran for the U.S. Senate, that we have to stop trading with communist China. They will, they will take our money, they will steal our secrets with the intent purpose of destroying our country. And that's what they're doing. It's actually happening now. This is what they actually say it now. But I've been saying this since 2000. In fact, I made a movie. You can go watch it at Amazon. It's Fixing America movie. I made a movie that, that said this is what's going to happen. So there are other candidates running. They got a lot more name recognition. They've just been wrong. And the question for everybody is, you want to do the celebrity contest again? You want to have the best known person? You'll get Biden. He's been 47 years in office with nothing to show for it. You might get Bernie Sanders, right? A, a, a socialist. But if we're going to have a crisis, we need somebody who can put together a team of people who can fix it. That's me. That's what I do. That's what I did in the private sector. I put the right person in the right place at the right time. God gave me a gift to do this. I've always done it. We need somebody who can do this. If someone else wants to do it, I'll go back to my farm in Colorado and hang out with my kids. But nobody's doing it. And now we're in the crisis. Now, not 10 years from now, like I said 10 years ago, the math doesn't work. Once we publicly borrowed over $20 trillion, right, and we were borrowing at zero because they kept rates too low. So it was $250 billion of interest cost on a budget of $4.5 trillion and a GDP of $23 trillion. Okay, but the interest costs are going up, and we can never get back to normal. Normal being 6% over 35 years. That's what the U.S. government's borrowed at. We can't go to $1.4 trillion in interest payments. We'll go broke. The Fed knows it. The rich people know it. So they can't raise rates anymore, and they can't make them go to zero. So we got to solve the problem, and that's why I'm running. So with, with that being said, you, you did just make a comment about the popularity contest. You have, and you have some big names in there, uh, Mr. Steve. Yeah. You got Donald Trump. You got Ron DeSantis. Well, he hasn't announced, but we, we're assuming here that he will announce in the near future. Uh, Nikki Haley. And you have other candidates that are coming forward, Tim Scott. And they're all thinking about this run for president of the United States. And, you know, you, you have a history, you're a filmmaker, you ran for Senate, you've been a mayor, you've been in politics. What, what do you tell people when they're going to see this interview and they're going to say, well, Steve Laffey, we would like to look into him, but does he really have a shot at beating Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, or Nikki Haley? The people listening to this show have to make me have a shot if you want to fix these problems. I, I want everybody listening to go to stevelaffey.com and then go to nikkihaley.com. Nikki Haley's website takes money. There's nothing there. SteveLaffey.com has things I've said. There's hundreds of hours of tape. You want to hear me talk about Israel for an hour and Ariel Sharon and why they should not have given up the Gaza Strip? Go watch it. You want to watch me for three minutes, one hour? You want to watch the movie? You've got to make this happen. I'm only running because we've got to flip the tables on the money changers. Like, 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 like Herman Cain almost did in 2011. Like Ross Perot almost did twice, by the way. And if he hadn't gotten out of the race, I voted for him twice, by the way, just so <laughs> you know. But, but Ross Perot didn't stay in. We've got to do it like that. If it's just going to be a beauty contest. I mean, give me, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to personally attack people. I'm a Christian. I, I, don't, I don't really get into this. But if the bar is so low that just because you've been in office or – Let's take Nikki Haley. God bless her. She was the head of the, uh, the U.N. ambassador, right? What, go and read why she's running. She's running because um, she's the daughter of uh, Indian-American Indi uh, immigrants, whatever. Her son has trouble buying a home, whatever. And, uh, and her daughter is writing woke papers to get an A. These are her quotes. She also says her big accomplishment at the U.N. is getting the United States of America out of the Human Rights Commission. Well, you and I can do that. The big thing would be getting, getting Russia and China out of the Security Council or getting Cuba out of the Human Rights Commission, right? 
Those are the human rights violators, right? So that, by the way, we can do that. I would try to do it as president. I'd appoint you to do it and tell you just this, this is what I want you to do. Go get me 65% of those votes and get those two countries out of the UN, right? And let's put some normal countries in. Let's put Canada. Let's put Australia here. Let's put countries that are normal back into that. But, but the people of America have allowed the bar to be set so low that if, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, if they had in a, a debate and they lined up 15 candidates and said, how are you going to balance the budget? 14 people would fall off the back of their chairs and I would answer the question. That's the difference. So the people listening to the show have to make, that's why I'm on every show, everywhere. I can talk. I know what I'm talking about. And I think the people listening right now are like, yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. That's the question though. Do I have enough time to make an imprint? I'd rather be where I am right now, by the way, a small growth stock, all right? On his way up, like Herman Cain, Nikki Haley announced she was at 7%. She's now four. Vivek was two. He's zero. These people, anybody who was associated with Donald Trump or helped Donald Trump or he helped is not going to beat Donald Trump. The mini-me campaign will not work. It's not working. We need someone who has never been associated with Donald Trump. By the way, I'm not a never Trumper. Don't just so you know. I'm not like attacking Donald Trump. I love what he did with the judges, but I don't like deficits. He ran up $8 trillion in four years. I'm not doing that. He didn't want market rates. I want market rates. I am strong dollar Steve Laffey. The strong dollar is what I want because that brings an in investment. Investments brings in jobs. We have to start thinking like we do at church. It's about the long term and where we're going to be forever. In the short term, we might have a little more fun, but we're not going to heaven. In America, it's not about the short-term things we want to tell Americans. It's the long-term future for our children. And if you believe that, you only have one person to vote for, one person to help. It's me. That's just the way it is. And I tell you, you just go to these websites, anybody listening, just go to them and say, you know what? That guy's got five complete solutions right there. He's got videotape of him saying exactly this. He's saying things that nobody else will say. When everybody says, like the governor of Florida, like Speaker McCarthy, like President Trump, we're not touching Social Security, that is fiscally immoral. That is the biggest deficit line item thing we have. It's $61 trillion, And I know how to fix it. It's up there on the website. And listen, to be brutally honest, if you're 52 years old and listening, you could get less. If you're 47, you could get less. If you're 62 and older, you're going to get the same thing you always got. If you're 20, you're going to get five times more. We do this for the kids. We suck it up. We put our fists in like a football team and say, we're in. We're Americans. We're going to fix this before the whole thing implodes. Because when it implodes, not if anymore. Yeah, it's, going, it's going to happen. Really bad things are going to happen quickly. In You go back and look through history. Go back to 2008. You look at what happened to Spain and Greece when their debt to, to GDP capita hit over 100%. Interest rates, everything's fine, everything's fine. Two, two and three quarters, three, 12. 12. Their 10-year bonds yield 12. The whole thing collapsed. That's going to happen here. We've got to stop it, folks, for the sake of our children. Let's all suck it up a little bit. Let's, let's, let's have someone tell you the truth. And you say, okay. It's happened, it happened once in my life. Cranston, Rhode Island was broke in a microcosm. I know America is much bigger, but I'm the only one with the background to do this. They don't let you teach the top finance course at LSU if you don't know finance. OK, so so I know I taught the top finance course at the University of Rhode Island for three years while I was mayor. So my campaign in Cranston went like this. You're not going to like what I have to do. But I didn't come all the way back home to live in Detroit. I will fix it. You're not really going to like it, but you'll thank me when I'm done. And they did. I was reelected by the widest margin, a, a conservative evangelical Christian in Cranston, Rhode Island, Republican, reelected by the widest margin in Cranston's history. That's some good and stuff. It can happen in America, Carson. Oh, yeah. It can, it can happen in America. And, and look, you know, everybody looked at Donald Trump as a long shot. So keep, keep your head up. Just saying, you know, everybody thought Donald Trump was a no. long shot. And you know what? I did not. I said when he announced and he talked about China, I said publicly he's going to win. And people thought I was a crackpot. And I said, let me tell you something. I made a movie called Fixing America. 
I travel across the country. I'm in Arkansas. I'm, I'm in swing states like Western Pennsylvania making this movie. And there's people lying there looking up at the ceiling, a guy making 65 grand, but he used to make 80 with overtime in an auto factory. And he knows his jobs in China. And the first person that said China, and I wish it had been me, he's going to vote for. He's going to win these swing states. He's going to win that Northern Maine Electoral College. He's going to win Ohio. He's going to win Wisconsin. It's all on tape. And he did. And guess what I said in 2020? He's going to lose. And here's why he's going to lose. We're not shutting down the economy. We're firing Fauci. We're telling people, you know what, Americans, everybody goes to work. Instead, we didn't do that. And then when he reached out for the negative interest rates and he reached out for other things, on the margin, there are people like me who simply won't vote as a Republican for people who run these large deficits for any reason. And that's how we lost. I believe that that what's going to happen by September, October, is that all the other people who've been associated with him, if they run or don't run, whatever they're doing, are never going to come close to Donald Trump. And at some point, someone's going to say, is there somebody else? And I'm not against, again, Donald Trump loves this country. I said in 2016, he's not involved in Russia. He loves his kids. His kids love him, which is very important to me, by the way. <laughs> um, and and But these things can't keep going on, and I don't think he'll win the general election because these people in the middle, these suburban moms, they've been totally turned off for whatever reason, personally. And some people vote personally. Remember, people vote for all different reasons. My mom would only want to know on the city council of Cranston who was pro-life. Now, the city council of Cranston had nothing to do with, with pro-life issues, never came up, but she didn't care. She wanted to know who was pro-life, and that's who she voted for, that she was a one-issue lady. And so everybody has a different reason. I think I can contribute. And by the way, if all I can contribute by you people supporting me is that we change the very nature of the debate and I get to go back to my farm, I'm totally fine. I am just happen to be 61 in perfect health, can remember the names of all of my teachers from nursery school on the 12th grade. And, and I know what to do. And I've spent 20 years getting ready for this. And I need people to listen. We got to do this for our children. Mr. Uh, Steve, could you go ahead and let people know where they can find you and if they're interested in getting in contact with your campaign uh, to look yeah. more about you, look up about you more and uh, consider you as president of the United States? SteveLaffey.com is a complete website. I think you can just hit the media page. You can send me an email. You can. Uh, there's a lot of things there. You can go to Substack and see something I put out every day. You know, you can stop watching that. If you really want to watch my movie, you can go to Amazon. It's at, it's at Amazon. Fix, type in Steve Laffey, Fixing America. There, there's the movie. There's also, you can get to the website, just the trailer, Fixing America movie, the movie I made, and watch the trailer. By the way, when you get to stevelaffey.com, scroll down and watch my wife do a video bio about me. That's all you really need to know. I'm a family person. I got a beautiful wife. I've got six kids. And the last thing you need to know about me to go find me is that is that the reason you haven't heard about me for a while is that on May 29th of 2015, my 18 year old daughter came down with stage four cancer, was stricken. And my wife went off to the hospital for several years, for 200 nights a year. We were homeschooling the three little ones and I took over homeschooling and didn't get to run for governor of Colorado. That's where I bet. Sometimes God calls you away. You do what you have to do as a father. I didn't really want to do it. <laughs> I did it. By the way, it was the greatest thing I ever did. The, the results of my children and the closeness that I have with them are far more important than running for president. The three kids I homeschooled, all are sophomores at college, including the youngest admittee in the history of Colorado State University, Stephen Laffey Jr., who was admitted at 12 after he got a 1360 on his SAT. I know education. I've educated kids in Montessori public schools, uh, private schools, Catholic schools, and I personally homeschooled the last three. I'm talking about Saxon math books, flipping pages, sixth grade, seventh grade. Listen, my, Stephen's a gifted kid. Not every kid can do this, but this is why I became radicalized against public schools over a long period of time from being a mayor and knowing that we have to have a different system. And so that's where I've been, and that's why you don't know who I am. But it's okay with me. There's a, God had a different plan for me and this plan has been beautiful for my life. I just feel like I have several years now to help fix this country and know how to do it. 
Mr. Steve, thank you for coming on the Cajun Conservative Show. And, uh, sir, we I hope this ain't the only time. Hope you come back on later in the future. I will. Anytime you need me, I'd love to come down to the Cajun. And I, and I get your way. I'm going to come in and, and you're going to take me out to a bayou, I hope, and get some shrimp. Uh, look, my father-in-law is a shrimper in Delcom, Louisiana, so we can get all the shrimp we want. So we'll fire okay. up the we'll fire up the pot. We'll put them in there. Maybe you can put some crawfish in there. How about that? I miss my time in Louisiana. I really, really do. It was wonderful. Hey, you might, you might you might gain that ten pounds back though. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I can't do that now. I only can come for a week, one pound a week. I hear you. I hear you, Mr. Steve. Thank you again. We hope to see you soon. That was Steve Laffey. He is running for president of the United States of America in 2024. Uh, go ahead and check out his website, stevelaffey.com. Uh, you can find all the information, how to donate, and everything on the issues. Uh, that was great having Mr. Laffey on. Uh, again, we're going to have him on later on. Ladies and gentlemen. Hey, we're growing. We're getting presidential candidates on, ladies and gentlemen. That's a the fastest growing conservative podcast in the nation but with that being said we're going to go ahead and end the show today uh again if you can hit the subscribe button hit the follow button on the platform you are listening on if you have any questions or concerns you can contact me at the cajun conservative five at gmail.com just remember that jesus christ is king and he's coming back and he's coming back soon so don't be faint of heart because jesus has overcome the world if you want to know jesus as your personal lord and savior reach out to me i'll tell you how to make jesus your savior and heaven your home so don't be fate of heart he got everything under control until next time be blessed you be encouraged you have a good one Jesus Christ has risen and he